talking about? Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boys. Welcome in Rugby League fans and uh, my name's Troy Hardy with the Auckland Rugby League and we're live streaming today at Nati Ataro Park as the Scorpions are hosting the Manurewa Marlins. So a little bit of a change up after uh, Queen's birthday weekend, a couple of weekends of uh, no footy but we're back and we're back with something new as well. We're also at the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship and uh, looking forward to a massive clash here today. Both teams will be looking to get a W on the board. Uh, two of the other teams that are uh, tracking really well in the um, Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship are the Hibiscus Coast Raiders, coached by Wax up there, and he's got them firing with young, the forgotten Ackland, we call him, Liam Ackland, who tells me he's still the fastest across 100 metres, and uh, he smoked his brother Aiden. So um, that one's for you, Liam. You've got that one on the board. And, of course, um, tucked in beside them is also the Manukau Magpies. And um, they seem to be tracking very well with a core young group who have come through the grades and are certainly putting teams under pressure. Um, they have a major fan to the Manukau Magpies, and that's John Kerr. And John Kerr is one of our major sponsors here with the interview sections and uh, very proud to be sponsored by um, Safety First Removals. And if you've got a construction site that's having the need for hazardous materials to be taken, taken away, um, he's your man and you'll be able to get to what their services and what they provide on safetyfirstremovals.co.nz. Now, not far off the mark, Corey's going to be talking to the two head coaches of the teams that we're live streaming today and um, he'll get some insight in regards to, I don't know, let's kick off and run downhill if you're the home team. So, as I said, not too far away, the interview's coming up, get yourself a nice cup of tea or a cold green tea if you're wanting one of those and uh, live action coming to you and look and if you're in the neighborhood down here in otara come down and join us the sun's out the camp cafeteria is open and they've got some wonderful brand new facilities here that um you know certainly will make it enticing to be hosted as i said don't go too far away back real soon Joining me now, Solo so Masi, the head coach of the Otara Scorpions. Well, we're about six weeks in now. Uh, how do you assess the season so far and, and how things are developing for the Scorpions? Yeah, we're travelling um, OK at the moment. Obviously, it uh, could be a lot better. Uh, our two losses this year have been against um, a really good uh, Monaco side. So we're looking forward to um, getting back on the board today after the week off, a uh, long weekend. So, yeah, not too bad. Could be better. Would be better today. Could always be better when you're not on top, eh? A, uh, a few interesting additions for you this year, none more so from my point of view than uh, McGrath Lulawai, who uh, we've followed uh, during his time in England playing for Witness. Uh, what's he added to the squad and, and I guess what can fans expect to see from him? Uh, valued experience is, is definitely a big thing that uh, McGrath has brought 
um, just as insight on the game, positional play for especially our young boys, uh, young players that are here at the club, um, being in the witness um, system at that level has been a real positive for us um, and a key person in our personnel for this year. Yep. I know certainly Dad has it, James, and uh, and Thomas very much has it. They see the game in a little bit more depth than your average person. Is that the case for McGrath as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of experience at that lock position. Uh, his ball playing skills are uh, the next level for us and just his leadership on the field uh, contributes to uh, where we want to be uh, next year but also game by game. Big clash today against uh, Manurewa. Uh, you're no stranger to, to this club of course and uh, have had some great battles over the years. Um, I guess there's common themes that exist in, in teams um, through the years. What does it take to beat Rewa? Oh, for us, whatever it takes to beat any team is a um, good platform on the forwards, um, some good early ball for the backs. Uh, but more importantly, um, defence, defence, defence. I mean, that's the key for today. And you're right, there's always been a um, good rivalry between the clubs, and we're happy to host them this time round. Uh, we had a close one last year um, before COVID um, stopped the comp, um, and we're not um, expecting anything different. If anything, we're expecting a lot more, given that it's um, our home advantage. And just finally, you've got this beautiful new uh, club down here, uh, which has been developed over the last few years. We're going to get to that through the coverage. But I guess as a coach, I mean, what, what difference does it make? I guess people are a little bit happier to come down to training and things like that when you've got a beautiful facility like this. Oh, it's been a long time coming, uh, the facility. And I think um, like growing up here, playing here, um, the, the light that it sort of shines over the community, especially for this area where the club is, um, and the way that Willie and the executive team are trying to run the club through employment, um, having our laundry down here for this area, doctors, all that stuff is going to contribute to building the club and having a one-stop shop, for, especially for this, this um, area down this side of um, Otara. Awesome. Hey, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to let you go and uh, prepare the team now. All the very best today. Cool. Thank you, Gordy. Cheers. Okay, thank you. Well, that was quick and uh, fast, a bit like Willie Meyer. So, Willie, um, I know that this is normally the chairman's chat and we get to have a wee bit of a conversation around what's going down in Scorpion Town. But uh, you're no longer the chairman, so let's talk to that and let's talk about the project and let's talk about the club. So, roll, mate, what do we call you now? Uh, interim president, I think, would be the best. Um, and then all-round support and advisor to the team that's coming through. There was a bit of a conflict because I couldn't be the chairman of the of the executive board, and then be the uh, the general manager who they are paying to look after the complex. So one of the roles had to go, but I'm still around and I'm still being told what to do. So uh, you know, okay. And uh, Willie, mate, um, you know, a ton of work's been done around the clubhouse and the facilities that you've got down here are just absolutely fantastic. Just talk us a little bit through that and what you've managed to achieve. Yeah, well, again, it's a, um, a big club room that can service our winter sport. But also we have seven other sports or clubs that are wanting to base themselves here. Uh, one of the early things that we were told by council is that uh, they'll build it, but we have to sustain it. So we are about two or three weeks away from having a medical clinic and the laundry that will help uh, pay the bills. 
So, Lee, go, ladies and gentlemen, Otara, a rugby league, not just um, you know a clubhouse. There's a lot of facilities down here, medical centre. Uh, you said a laundromat? Uh, yeah, yeah, OK, now, just on that, you've got a big supporter too for the club for sponsors. Oh, most definitely, when uh, we were down and out or starting, it's always been um, Davish and Waterview Laundromat, uh, who also gave us some really good advice on our own laundromat. Um, and then, of course, Esita Tupu, who's always been here, He'll be the last to be unemployed because people are always passing away. So um, thank you, Essie, and thank you, Devesh, for all the support that um, has allowed us to be where we are. Thank you. And just on that, look, for any sponsors, potential sponsors out there, if they were looking to be involved with the Otara Scorpions, who would we need to talk to? Who would I have to go and see? Look, come and see me. If, you're, if I'm a friendly face now, uh, and we can have a chat about uh, how we can um, support you as well. We've got the, from what I've been told, we've got the biggest following in, on in our club Facebook. And so, you know, we can hit you up. Troy is the great advisor of us in that area. And so we, I'm sure that we can compliment you as much as you help us. So thank you. And also now let's talk a bit about the clubs and, uh, sorry, the club and your team. So, you know, you've got uh, girls playing down here. You've got boys, you know, right through to the Prem side. If you want to play rugby league and we're living in the neighbourhood, how do we go about that? Oh, we, we have a Facebook, but again... Um, we really want to show off our, our building, so come down. There's always a coffee station. The water is always hot here, as we've been told by our, our marae, our local marae. So uh, have a coffee, chat to us, or just contact us through uh, the, the numbers that are on Facebook. Love to have you here. And finally, mate, look, um, you know, new clubhouse. Um, we've talked about, you know, uh, guys that are supporting you and sponsors and, you know, up and running with the new facilities. Um, in regards to the tracking of this season, you know, we're into it. Um, you know, what's your vibe on that and uh, what are your views in regards to how well the Otara Scorpions are doing? Look, we, we've, always had this, um, we've always had this goal. We look after our, our juniors and uh, we know that, we, that we, they're now looked after. And we've had huge support from Auckland Rugby League in doing that. We're now, our goal is to, to be in the Fox. Uh, there's no other exception, you know, we can we can be a junior club if we wanted to, but we really want to put our challenge to be in the Fox and to be at the top of the, of the competition. So that's our goals for this year, is just to make that top four and then go on from there. Well, look, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't got too far away before the main action starts to get ready. On behalf of the Auckland Rugby League, want to thank you for hosting us down here, Willie. Fantastic facilities. If you're in the neighbourhood, please come down and join us as we get ready now for the Otara Scorpions up against the Manurewa Marlins. 2.30 kick off, it's going to be live. Don't go too far away. Right, head coach of the Manjaro Marlins now, Ben Phillips, joining me. Well, Ben, we are uh, six weeks in, and I just asked Solo the same question, but um, how are things going so far? Are they tracking how you want? I know you've had a, a rough run with injuries, but, yeah, how's everything going? Oh, as you say, we've had a rough run with injuries uh, for the boys. Uh, you know, we're doing what we're doing, what we can with what we've got at the moment, and we're, we're treating well. You know, we're going all right at the moment. Uh, it's a lot better than what we thought we were going to do. You know, so all our credit goes to, obviously, all our players and our training staff to get our boys to where we are at the moment. And uh, I caught up with Nate Simmons on the uh, on the way in. He's had an unlucky run with injuries so far, but um, you know, I, I guess a, a key out for you given the experience he brings. Yes, he was uh, one of our guys in our hubs. Um, obviously, he's going he's to be missed for the rest of the year due to his injury. Um, you know, that's something that obviously we, it's out of our control. So, got a couple of young boys in here at the moment. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, ex referee Kiko Rangi, yep, playing in our house today. So, see how he goes. He, he played well last week, so he was pretty hard on himself. But he, he did really well last week for us. Uh, in terms of you know, you look at your last up performance, what are the main things you want to see your team improve on? And I guess what have you been working on over the last couple of weeks? Oh, particularly this game here, we've been working a lot on defense. We know what 
you know, between the two clubs, Team Manurewa and Otara, we, we play each other every year, and it's always a good game between the two clubs. If there's one thing that we do know about Otara, they're a big side. They play up the middle, and they run with energy. So we've done a lot of training this week on, on defence to try and slow that down, as well as obviously stacking in the tackles. Excellent. Hey, Ben, we're going to let you go and uh, finish warming the team up, mate. Uh, on behalf of the Auckland Rugby League, thanks for joining us and all the very best. Thank you very much. Cheers. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome into Ngāti Otara Park here in Auckland. We are live for today's feature match in the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship qualifiers between the Otara Scorpions and the Manurewa Marlins. Beautiful day down here and uh, we'll get to talking about this incredible uh, new clubhouse that they've got down here, the Scorpions. It really is uh, something to see and uh, just creates a great vibe across the whole park. There's a Nice little food court area there, and uh, it's been great to see uh, Fano mixing and mingling throughout the day today. Lots of games on here today, uh, right from the little kids up through the uh, girls' grades, and uh, I think we've got some Ray Crunch Cup action and everything happening as well. All right, we're going to talk you through some of the action from, uh, well, two weeks ago now and some of the ladders before we get into the build-up for our main game today. I'll be joined in commentary today by TJ Ashford, and uh, we'll bring TJ in now. Because TJ, uh, you know, you, there's been a couple of clubs that you've been involved with uh, that we've commented the last couple of years, but uh, you've got a, a close affinity to, to Manurewa. I think that was your junior club and where it all started. Yeah, it was um, back when I was a, a wee top there. That's where I started. Um, but I also got a, a family attachment there with the Otara Scorpions as well. That's actually my uh, my parents, um, my, my dad's junior club and my grandmother used to help out in the cafeteria here back in the day as well. So uh, this is uh, definitely a... 
a fixture that I'd like to be here commentating on today. So I'm looking forward to the contest. There you go. He's a, he's a man with links to uh, to many clubs across Auckland. And uh, great to have you in the commentary booth again today, TJ. All right, we're going to start with the uh, competition ladders and talk you through how things are, are looking in those competitions. So we'll start with the Farrelly Photos Women's Competitions. And after five weeks in that competition, it's round six this week. Well, that, that ladder can actually say that Manurewa is on 12 points because they had a good victory last night in Friday Night Footy under lights against Tiaratu. So uh, pending Point Chevalier's result, uh, they'll keep at least a uh, two-point lead, potentially a, a four-point lead over the Point Chevalier Pirates. It's in Ponsonby, Richmond, Tiaratu and Pakaranga. And down in the second tier, the championship Taniwharo, Howick, Manako, Manurewa, and then there's a, a log jam of teams, uh, Glenora, Marist, and Otara, all within two points of each other. Tuako, the only team without a victory so far at the bottom. TJ, if we look at that Taniwharo team, uh, look, uh, another Waikato invasion. Uh, they won the 18s a couple of years ago. Isn't it wonderful to see they've embraced the girls' game, uh, have come up to Auckland, made the effort to get there, and uh, are now reaping the rewards at senior level. Yeah, I like the fact, Corey, that they've stayed together for the last couple of years as well and obviously trying to build a foundation down there in Tani Fido and um, having them in the Auckland competition this year is, and, and they've been in there for the last couple of years, actually, it's, it's outstanding to them to you know for all the travelling and things like that that they do each week. And um, There's a couple of teams there on their heels. I know Howick, I've been out to one of the girls' trainings out there and they're looking sharp out there as well. And Obviously, the uh, Manurewa development side out there coming through the championship grade and uh, they'll be pushing for high spots. And I'm trying to challenge that Tani Fido team the back end of the season. Yeah, that Manurewa team not doing too badly to be there considering they, they missed the first round completely. They didn't enter until the second week. So I've got some experienced nicely. players there too, Corey. I think Serena Fiesel has been back there as well. So they've got some experienced players coming through there, so they'll be a team to look out for. Yeah, and uh, awesome to see Serena back helping the uh, the next generation through. I do want to give a quick shout-out as well to the other clubs. Uh, we just mentioned Tani Fido. There are a number of clubs who have made the effort to uh, to actually go down and play their away game again. It's Tony Fido down at Davies Park, which is uh, awesome stuff, and uh, and I know they put on a, a great host down there at Tony Fido as well. So big shout out to those clubs. Let's move now to the ladder for the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship qualifiers. At the top, it is the Hibiscus Coast Raiders. Perfect so far. Another test today against Pakaranga. Nestled in behind is Monaco, and then we've got the Otara Scorpions, Pakaranga, Jaguars, Manurewa. Waitamata and Papatoi Toi. So uh, a big game when you uh, look at the ladder here, TJ, for these two teams. Uh, they're tied on competition points right now. Otara with the Ivana John for and against. Um, but you can just see that three-way fight for that uh, fourth spot. It's uh, it's going to be pretty intense over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, there's obviously a, a log jam there with three of the teams currently on six. And uh, Pakaranga got a big contest as well with um, Hibiscus to try and keep uh, within that pack as well. So uh, look, both teams will look to come out strong today and uh, they need to um, keep in uh, contact with that top four so a, a win today uh, will keep them in, in the race for that top four position so it's a big one between Otara and Manurewa today. Let's have a look now at the first division qualifiers, the SAS Fox Memorial Premiership qualifiers ladder and at the top it is the two perfect teams, Point Chevalier v Glenora. Glenora have a huge test today, they take on Howick, Root Roos is on the line in that one as well. Howick are uh, third right now, and uh, a win would see them draw back to within two points, but um, a loss, and uh, really the, those top two teams are, are pulling some distance already in the competition. Remember, the points carry over into the competition proper in the case of the first division. Mount Albert just in behind, and then it's Otahu, Mangari East, Bay Roskill, Tiaratu, Marist, Richmond, Northcote, and then uh, Papakura, the only team yet to pick up their second victory. So a couple of key points here, TJ. We uh, look at the battle for the uh, the top five, which is obviously the long-term goal. That's the teams that make the playoffs. But just looking at that uh, battle to avoid the drop, uh, really you would think Bay Roskill just about safe, not quite yet. Uh, but then from there, it's uh, it's anyone's guess. The other two, Maris, Richmond, Northcote and Papakura, they're up to their eyeballs in that battle. Yeah, with three rounds still to go before the split, um, Bay Roscoe obviously, I think they need to win at least one of those games to um, try and avoid um, yeah, the other Fox Championship um, Premiership after the split. But again, you've got the likes of Teata too, uh, Marist and Richmond all, all vying for spots. And I, we were looking at the table um, 
or the draw over the last week as well. And some of those bottom teams actually yeah. have some tough games coming up. So it's going to be a, um, a big few weeks for the, the bottom uh, four or five teams there. And they need to try and scrape together a couple wins just to avoid that bottom four position. All right, let's move to the fixtures now. We'll start with the Fairly Photos women's competitions. And uh, that game's already been played. The first one there, that was uh, Friday Night Footy Under Lights. How good to have uh, Friday Night Footy as well there at Te Aratu South Park. Manurewa got up for a big victory in that one. They're travelling very nicely. The Ponsonby Ponies are at home to the Pakaranga Jaguars. Dion Briggs' side coming along nicely as well. And then uh, Point Chevalier up against Richmond. Uh, a number of players who uh, have played for, for both clubs there. That'll be a bit of a local derby match. That one's been played at Walker Park at 2.30 in the second tier. Davies Park Huntley is home for first versus second in the championship. Tani Fado taking on Hunt, uh, Howick, I should say. Marist are at home to Manarewa. Manako to Tuako. And uh, Otara head west to take on the Glenora Bears. So that's how things look in the Fairly Photos women's competitions. Let's move now to the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship qualifiers. The game at Thompson Park isn't going ahead today, so we've got a live stream game, Nati Otala Park. Stanmore Bay Reserve, this is no doubt the game of the round in terms of I guess um, picking out the two teams with the, with the most to play for. Hibiscus looking to uh, remain unbeaten and uh, Pakaranga, if they can jag a victory, excuse the pun, uh, be huge for them over the Hibiscus Coast. Yeah, and I've, I've had a couple of opportunities to coach against Pakaranga over the last couple of years, and uh, they are probably known as one of the bogey teams as well, Corey. So if there's a team that could um, upset one of the top of the table uh, teams, Pakaranga will probably be one of those teams. And um, what's, you know, working in Hibiscus' favour today is obviously they're playing at home as well, and um, they get a huge amount of support down there at Stanmore Bay Reserve, so that'll be a big fixture out there over the bridge today. Papatoi Toi versus Waitamata, the other match. Let's move now to the SAS Fox Memorial Premiership qualifiers. Games to die for, really, this round. Mount Albert at home to Otahu. That is one of the top five clashes. The other one is Glenora taking on Halleck. Root Rooster on the line there as well. Papakura are at home to Mangari East. Papakura need a win. That's as simple as that. They're two points back from the pack right now, and if there are any chance of surviving, uh, I would think a victory today over Mangari East is uh, is pretty much uh, needed. And of course, uh, plenty on the line in that match as well. There's uh, a number of players who have gone between those two clubs, uh, another of the sort of local derby matches. Richmond are at home to Point Chevalier. Te Aratu take on Bay Roscoe. Huge game for both those clubs. Bay pretty much safe or maybe even mathematically safe if they can get a victory. And uh, for Te Aratu, a chance to jump out of the relegation zone. Northcote take on Maris, where we talk about important games. Uh, you look at the at the path for Northcote, they've got some really, really difficult games coming up. Uh, desperately need a result today against Maris. Yeah, and that's probably a game that you'd pencil in for them to try and win as well, Corey, just to avoid relegation. So um, both teams just struggling to get a little bit of consistency in their game at the moment, and uh, both will be looking to try and get a win uh, down there at Murray Halberg today. All right, let's move our attention to our live game today and run you through the team lists and uh, how the two sides will line up. And uh, there are a few changes from uh, that which will be on screen. And uh, we'll maybe just run you through some of the guys to look out for. McGrath Lulawai is a guy that uh, Sol Solomon, uh, Sol Masi, I should say, uh, spoke about a lot in the uh, in the pre-match. Uh, certainly brings some experience into the front row here. Watch as well for the two Tanaki brothers, Pierce and Storm. Uh, they were involved in the region of origin a couple of years ago. Really talented players. And uh, the Fatialofa brothers as well, Manu, the older brother, and uh, and Robert, they add plenty of starch to this Scorpions forward pack. We move our attention to Rewa. Nigel Ito is a player that I like. He's uh, been involved in a number of our uh, rep systems over the last couple of years. Really talented player. Balmain Patuai will lock the scrum and captain the side. And uh, watch as well for Kiko Puhigibi Hibbs, one of our uh, dedicated refs from the last couple of years, Vigo. He's put the uh, whistle down this year on the field and uh, understand playing very well as well. Yeah, he is. And he's obviously um, yeah, doing a fair bit of work on his, his kicking game playing in the AFL competition um, towards the summer season as well. So looking forward to seeing Kiko out there um, representing his junior club as well. All right, I'm now going to bring in Troy Hardy. And Troy, nice to uh, have you here with us today. Beautiful day for it. Uh, absolutely. And if you're in the neighbourhood, get down here. It's going to be a fantastic match of rugby league. And look, boys, I know you'll join me in giving a big shout out to Pat Carthy, who had a, uh, a bit of a shock earlier in the week and um, is, is laid up. So uh, speedy recovery there, Pat. 
And on behalf of uh, the boys I work alongside here during the weekend, um, I know that their heartfelt thanks go out to you. I, however, uh, still, you know, jury's still out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I can see you rolling your eyes. Anyway, we're getting ready for the big kickoff, and I hope you enjoy the game, Pat. Enjoy, enjoy. All right, Otara to kick us off. Round six of the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship qualifiers in Old Deer. Well, Kenneth Edmonds with uh, the nightmare of all nightmares, a drop off the kickoff, so early advantage to the Otara Scorpions. And uh, we don't have to wait too long to see our first scrum pack down for the day. TJ, you prepare all week, you talk about all the things you want to do, and then uh, it all goes wrong from the kickoff. Yeah, probably not the start that um, Manu were, were looking for there, but uh, they need, definitely need a muscle up here. And uh, Otara are a very physical side, so they'll be looking to stamp their dominance early in this clash. So um, they just need to scramble well here and try and turn them away and force an error. Maka Hakalo feeds the scrum, the former Pakaranga man. He's been playing well as well in the halves so hill will clear the ruck and brings play back towards the middle of the park luluai mcgrath luluai goes very close good strong carry his first of the day down this left side they work it bring in the edge back rower this is the 12 pierce tanaki and it looks like Rewa have forced an error there. So they turn over the ball, and after that drop off the kickoff, Manure would do exactly what TJ Ashford is encouraging them to do muscle up and uh, survive an early scare. Yeah, they've done well there. They've obviously turned the ball over and forced an error. And I just feel that um, one of the Tanaki boys are just. Um you know, try to look for early points there, some easy points there. He should, probably should have looked for a quick play of the ball and work off the back of that. But well done to uh, Manurewa for turning them away there. So the Marlins now working this out from their own line. They started with a hiss and a roar, the Marlins, but uh, were undefeated until taking on the Hibiscus Coast. But from that point on, it's been a little bit rough sailing for the poor old Marlins. No injuries. are caught up with uh, Nate Simmons on the way in. He's uh, got a busted finger right now. That was after he did his MCL at the start of the year. So uh, rough times indeed, and uh, they've lost plenty of experience. So the Marlins now about eight short of halfway. Elden Kake clears the ruck and a, a booming long kick from Kiko. And too long as it turns out. And uh, will drift dead and they're back out to the 20. But uh, a sign of uh, what's to come perhaps off that booming boot of Kiko Buipi Hibs. Yeah, I mentioned that before the game started. Corey, that's his experience in the AFL. That's, that's something that... Um, is one of Kiko's strengths, so look for him to kick uh, his Manurewa side out of trouble today. I say, as far as uh, halves go, Kiko is one of the taller ones we've got running around in the competition. So the Scorpions. In short of the halfway line. The Marlins supported today by principal sponsors, the Woody Licensing Trust and Otara Scorpions Waterview Laundromat. Shout out to my good mate, Devesh, as always. Wonderful supporter of Grassroots Rugby League. Jump online, have a look at his Facebook page there. Got a number of uh, different bits to his business. And uh, always good to support a man that supports our game. Kickboard in now by Sasangi who is then set upon by the Otara kick chase. Tanaki with the jersey, doing his best to drag him back and help out there. Kake looks to his right and links with Pulipi Hibbs. Another long kick and I'll just wait for confirmation there. I think, yep, out on the full is is the call. So uh, well, Kiko, he's got the, the power right on the boot there today, but <laughs> the accuracy a little off so far. 
Yeah, a bit tough for Kiko as well. He's a left foot kicker and he's um, pitched out there on the right hand side. So um, just to execute those kicks a little bit better, he probably needs to get himself in a bit better position earlier to um, execute those long distance kicks. Scrappy to say the least off the scrum and uh, we'll pack one down at exactly the same blade of grass and, uh, and go again. So early errors from both teams today. Dummy half there from Olua. Takes his side up into opposition territory. Swinging it out the back now. Hippie Hibs, shifts play on. They're going to come out to this left-hand side. Are they Rewin? No, Hebden instead steps back in field and will take the tackle. Just about lost the shirt. Kake into the half. Edmonds. Edmonds chips over the top. Difficult bounce at the back for Joshua Perez, but did well to gather it in in the end. Terry Hill to Luluai. Luluai plays late at the line. Brings in Seamal that time. In fact, it's uh, that's Fatih Lofa. Dummy and run there from the six. Fully Tussi. They do get to the kick eventually. Goes up over the top, is fielded in there by Sasangi. We will now get to working the ball back out. Seven and a half minutes gone. No real attacking opportunities for either team. There is, however, big contact. Led that time by Luluai and Simal. Rewa now shift out to this left-hand side. Nakao looking to get the offload away. Kake comes infield. Puhipi Hibs will hoist a kick. And, well, straight through the bread basket. So back-to-back -back sets now coming up for Manyalewa, and that time we see Puhipi Hibs get it right with the kick, TJ, and uh, forces an error, and Manyalewa now with a chance to register first points. Yeah, well executed kick on the back end of that set, So, um, and it's the first back-to-back -back set here as well, Corey, so it's good to uh, build a little bit of pressure on this big um, Otara Scorpion side, so hopefully um, Manyalewa can string together a few sets here and um, put some points together. It's a short one, which is contested. Oh, well, what a mess that is. I don't even know whose ball that is at the end of it. Yeah, on-field officials called knock-on here by Otara, so it's going to be money to a feed here. I say it was a short kick-out. Boy, the um, chase must have got there quick because it, uh, it did end up going 20 metres. It's 
Corey Hebden. Former fullback, long-time servant of the club. Ariaiti charging on there, Justice. Here's Nakao. Kake dummies and goes himself. Gets held up nicely. They're right on the line here, Manurewa. Looking for first points as the game ticks over. Ten minutes. Nakao will borrow from dummy half, but it's held up. He was never going to pass in that position there. Corey, big front rower, hanging out on the edge and dummy half, one metre outside um, the try line. There's no way he was passing. Yes, there are certain players when they rush to dummy half in those situations that is somewhat obvious. You're right. As uh, Pahipi Hibbs now shifts play on. Otara up quickly, though, to close things down. Pahipi Hibbs, looping ball over the top. We've got our first try in the corner. No, the Scorpions... Scramble beautifully. Bundle them out and into touch. And uh, Otara survived that one. A nice goal line stand there from the Scorpions. Yeah, Otara could take a fair bit of confidence out of that too, Corey, defending their try line on back-to-back -back sets there and uh, repelling the uh, Manudu attack. So it's good for them. However, they have um, dropped the ball on the last couple of sets. So for them, they'll be looking to complete the set and try and uh, pin Manudu down in their corner. Trouble there from Tele Nanai Saturo, brother of uh, Etni and uh, the cousin of Tim Nanai Williams, for our rugby union fans out there. Very talented family. Luluai goes to the line. Easy looks dangerous when he ball plays late at the line there. McGrath Luluai heavily involved once again. And the Scorpions now with a bit of front football. Stepping back in field, they're on the last play and uh, will be taken down. So I have the chance they're on that time, the Otala Scorpions, but not to be. So another turnover. 12 minutes gone. You're here for round six of the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship qualifiers. Top four from this competition advanced to play in the Fox Championship competition proper, along with the bottom four from the first division qualifiers. Both these two teams. Right in the mix to be part of that top four right now. Rewa shift. Come out towards this left hand edge. Taking it on halfway. The world's biggest dummy half's there again. This time he's not burrowing. Nice ball back in field. A bit of dancing and weaving there from Brandon Nader. Yeah, just, just looking at the play as well, I actually think Issei Nungal's actually, although he's wearing 10, he's playing out in the centres there, Corey. So he's actually been pitched out here all, all game. So um, traditionally, Issei's, as we look at a heavily contested kick there, Issei's actually uh, a centre winger anyway, so it seems like he's playing in that position. Boy. Well, while we've been uh, discussing that, there's been a, a huge effort from Rewa to pin them in goal. So back-to-back -back sets coming up once again here for the Marlins. But interesting to note, yeah, SA looming out there in the centres. And uh, TJ, I think you uh, coached him when he was a, a little bit younger as well, and he was a winger back then, so no stranger to play a little bit outside. Yeah, well, I spent a bit of time with him in his junior um, representative stuff, but also spent time with him uh, when he was playing reserve grade premiers uh, about 10 or so years ago as well when he was a young fella. So as we see another short drop out here, and um, Otara look to... Yeah, I think they've won the ball yeah, here as well, have. Corey, so it's a big one for Otara. Boy, that's a, a heck of a drop out he's got on him. It goes so high that uh, by the time it comes down, even though it's going 15 or 20 metres, his, uh, his chases are there. So that is uh, certainly something to add to the arsenal for the Otara Scorpions as we crab across field now and looking to create an overlap. Now into a little bit of free space and streaming down the sideline now. Cover coming across. Decision to make here for Nida. Decides to go up high and makes a textbook tackle to bring down Raymond Mikaeli. 
And we've got our first try of the game. It is the number 16, Makalani Hakalo, who scores it after a long range break from Raymond Mikaeli. It was a great tackle here, TJ, but uh, Rewa just couldn't get the numbers back and Otara do well to register the first points. Yeah, Manurewa just couldn't get um, any defenders behind the ball there and uh, the fullback, uh, Brandon there, Nayara, he's, he's tried to slow it down as much as possible, but he's done the right thing. Otherwise, if he held on a bit too long, he probably would have been spending time in the bin there. So, uh, yeah, it come about from a, a nice little um, run from one of the Otara Scorpions uh, players earlier on in that play and he, he ran around a couple of the uh, would be Manurewa defenders there and managed to sneak a nice little offload there for that light, nice break down the side. Shaq on all to attempt the conversion from the right of the uprights. Kick is wide. My apologies if you're picking up the uh, rather large uh, production work going on in the background here. If I was um, Manurewa there too, Corey, it'd be a bit of a kick in the teeth there. They've, they've worked off a few back-to-back -back sets there and unable to capitalise while they've been down on Altada's line. And um, you know, that's, I think that's probably Altada's second opportunity there, apart from the first you know, set from kickoff, and they've managed to come away with points. So uh, Rewa just need to rally together and, and put a few defensive sets here to try and work themselves back in the contest. A reminder out there around the grounds, if you are uh, at a game today or indeed uh, any week, be a sport, just support. Let's uh, keep it nice and clean and respectful on the sidelines, ladies and gentlemen, particularly towards our uh, match officials. Remember, they are volunteers out there as well, doing us a huge favour as we see play break down. And is he going to say there was a rewa hand in there? Yes, he is. So six again coming up for the mar for Scorpions, I should say. The sloppy play the ball. Yeah, that was the right call by um, on-field uh, official there, Corey. Um, the number seven from Manurewa put his hand out to stop the pass there and knocked it down, so good call by the on-field official. And a little knock-on on the play of the ball. So the ball to turn over now. Fair error rate already starting to pile up. So Rewa straight off the scrum, they head up to this left-hand side. Nida pops a late offload, that's a knock-on. Ah, oh, just a little bit impatient there. Looked like it was nicely constructed for a minute, but uh, it breaks down with a, a loose offload, which couldn't be brought in by Olua. So I said before, the error rate is starting to pile up. Well, there's two in the space of about 20 seconds. Yeah, it's just important, Corey, that Manurewa don't try and, you know, look, search for easy points here to get back in the contest. And, and that was actually a really good run. He's got 20, 25 metres off that first play. And uh, all he needed to do there was take the tackle and work off the back of a quick play the ball. Um, but unfortunately, trying to look for early points there and um, come away with the error. Big carry 
off the back fence and straight through the initial line. Fati Alolfa streaming away. He's got support looming. He will not need it. Manu Fati Alolfa, what a try that is. Burst straight through the initial line. Had support looming, but boy, look at this. So Fatih Lofa going over for the try. And uh, nice to watch when a big man runs like that, TJ, and, uh, and manages to get through. Showed, um, well, a nice little bit of composure at the end there as well. Had support looming, but uh, felt he didn't need it. Yeah, some good play. Uh, you don't normally see front front row forwards or back rowers like that, uh, you know, with those type of skills. So, But, no, nah, again, you know, a great run by uh, Manu Fatih Lofa there. And... Uh, he showed some good leg speed uh, initially to break the line and uh, identified a smaller uh, target there in um, Alden Kaki as well, and he's just managed to break free. And I thought there um, Manudu had an opportunity to make that tackle at the end, but fullback uh, opted to uh, slide off, and, and that, that situation there probably should have just taken the man with the ball and hoped for the best there, but unfortunately uh, for Manudu, there's another try on the board there um, as we try and fix up the scoreboard on the live stream. I won't put you under the bus, Corey, but... I haven't had enough coffee today. Can you get me one at half-time, maybe, TJ? Wait for the kick from Ono. This time, flags are up. And it is the Waterview Laundromat, Otara Scorpions, 10. Woody Licensing Trust, Manurel Marlins, 0. 21 and a half gone here in round six of the Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship qualifiers. You touched on it earlier, TJ Manurewa. Had an, well, until about the last five minutes, had the actual better opportunities in the game, but uh, the Scorpions have hit the switch and uh, all of a sudden uh, have themselves a nice lead. Yeah, and like I said, I just feel like um, it, uh, sometimes when you're forcing things and trying to look for easy points, it comes off the back of a bit of frustration, and um, that's probably down to Manurewa having a couple attacking opportunities and not coming away with some points, so it's very easy to do, um, but again, just they just need to stop looking for easy points here and try and grind themselves back into victory because, uh, you know, Ortada's a side that, um, you know, they can pick up off the back of momentum and it looks like they've got that at the moment with a tough couple of carries in the first couple of um, plays here. Yeah, and there's no reprieve. You've got uh, Fatih Alofa and then another Fatih Alofa carry and then uh, McGrath Lulawai says, I'll have one. Here's Robert Fatih Alofa. Luluai goes to the line. Look at that. Ball playing like a half. Identify a little gap out on this side. It's a scrappy offload. May have been touched by Rewa. Play on is the call. No restart of the tackle count. Mikaeli now heading back in field. He's taken down in front of the uprights. Last play coming up now for the Scorps. Show in the go from Ono. Dribbles a kick in behind. Pressure on here at the back, but well taken by Sasangi. He did well to avoid the chase. Now Puhipi Hibbs becomes a makeshift dummy half. Rewa need a couple of good sets now just to stem the flow. Because it is all one-way traffic right now. The Scorpions with all the momentum. Yeah, that was a big attacking set off the back of points there as well, Corey. As a coach, that would be something that Ortara will be tipping up on um, at half time there. And um, That's the third tackle now for Manadu, and they're struggling to get outside their 20 here. So... Um, good attacking set, followed up by a big defensive set by Ortada, so well done. Yeah, those middles for the Scorpions, they uh, look like they've really sort of come into the game over the last 10 minutes. Kake swings it out to Poopy Hibbs. Another booming kick, look at that. Goes down and uh, is collected by Fully Tussi. Oh, broke down a little bit there, but Fatilofa able to get back and 
centralise things. Oh, good racing defence there from the Marlins. High one off the bird of Hakalo. No one wants a bar of it. Eventually it's gathered in by Nida, who then looks up and sees a little bit of space. Brings the football back. Now we've got a stoppage here. And high tackle is the call. there the call came from referee price to uh, get back up but uh, was too slow doing so so for hippie hibs now to kick for touch Big attacking set here for Monadeo Okori. I just feel, again, um, try not to look for early points here. And um, if they can't score within the set, look to build a bit of pressure with it. Um, you know, a set restart or something like that, man. So, so we see a nice little shift play there by Alden Kake. Naida. Naida got up and did a second effort. He might have got them here. He has. Price points to the spot. Brandon Naida it is that scores... In the left-hand corner, it was taken down initially, but had the presence of mind to get back up and go again. And Manyadewa onto the board now, 10 points to four, kick to come. Yes, yeah, we look at the SAS instant replay there, just a simple one-on-one -on -one missed tackle there by the Altata Scorpion, number six. And um, Brandon Knight has been in everything in terms of their attack at the moment, Corey, and he, he's looking likely on attack, so... He could be their, uh, their go-to um, person when they're hot on good ball there. Um, but nice little try there uh, by the Manurua fullback. It's a difficult kick to come from uh, right up against the sideline. Looks like Kiko's got the uh, goal-kicking duties as well. Yeah, if it's anything like his uh, fifth tackle options, he's, he's definitely going to have the distance on his kick here, but... Uh, again, he, he's been kicking well at the moment, and um, he's probably kicking Manadua out of trouble a little bit more at the moment, Corey. So um, he's playing a big part in this Manadua team at the moment. So wide to the right remains. What have you laundromat? Otara Scorpions, 10. With the licensing trust. Manurewa Marlins for 29 minutes gone here at Nati Otara Park. But the Marlins, a crucial hit back for them, really. And, uh, a chance for them now to reverse the momentum a little in this match. Tackle. 
Samuel Mahoney it is. Put a quick end to that. Fresh legs on the park in the shape of the man they call Panda, Matupula. Kake weaving in field. This is nice from Rewa. Late offload there. Now a chance perhaps on this left-hand side where they do have the numbers, the Marlins. They're desperate to get the ball there. Nakao into a little bit of space. Shakes out of the first one. Looks to head in field now. Trying to get an offload away, but it's taken the ground. 20 out from the line. Burrowing low. Price has a look at it. Says, I like what I see. The Marlins are in again. Two-point ball game. Just like that. What a set from the Money Little Marlins. TJ Ashford. Yeah, put this um this try down to as we look at the SAS instant replay there, Corey. Put this try down to the work from the hooker, which I think is wearing number six, um, Alden Kaki. Man, he's he's getting money on the front foot there, that whole set and uh, you know, Otara looked a little bit sluggish defending that, that set of six there and uh, well done to Manadua getting back-to-back -back points there and working himself back in this game. And there it is, that beautiful new clubhouse. The uh, brainchild of this club and it's been uh, years in the making and uh, we had a walk around it earlier. It is truly a uh, wonderful thing little space there you can see there's uh, the food court area and uh, there's a medical center in there I think a laundromat in there as well so uh, it's got it all and even in the design it's uh, made to look a bit like a marae which is pretty cool so a uh, big shout out to everyone for their hard work on that one and uh, Willie Meyer I know that's been uh, it's been his baby over the last few years and uh, I'm sure in some ways he's very happy to see the end of it he must also feel a little bit funny about that Pick is good. Tied ball game. Waterview Laundromat, Otara Scorpions 10. Witty Licensing Trust, Manurel Marlins 10. Eight minutes to play in this first half here. What a hit back from the Manurel Marlins, TJ. It was all Otara for a little bit there, but um, a few nice carries in there, and that set well, had a little bit of everything in it. Yeah, it has, and I just feel that um, Otara have made a few interchanges in the middle of the field there, and they're... they're Middle three forwards have gone off and they're a little bit sluggish defensively. Uh, Corey and just struggling to uh, control this monitor side. And again, um, you know, just look for the acting half there, Alden Kaki, to get out of acting half and, and speed this ruck up here for Monadir. And uh, I feel if they get on the, as we see, a nice little hit up here by the number 17. Good carry. I just feel Monadir was another side that once they get that, that momentum, they're hard to stop, Corey. So um, they'll be looking for a, a third try here in this set. And the Marlins now getting uh, into their work. It was uh, Matapula with a nice carry there to get things going. He's had a couple of nice carries since he uh, came onto the field. The man they call Panda. Not too sure of the uh, reason behind that. So penalty now for the Marlins. TJ just touched on it that uh, this is a dangerous team once they get a, a bit of momentum and confidence behind them. And they have that right now as Pahipi Hibbs looks to the sideline. Yeah, you can just see it in body language from the Otada Scorpions at the moment too, Corey. They're just um, hands on hips. Uh, it's probably not the sign that you're looking for uh, when you're trying to turn away points. So it's a big set for Otada because they could go from leading 10-0 um, so all of a sudden um, being behind in the contest after the space of five minutes. So they need to show some energy here. And a strip. And we've got time off here, so we're going to have a talking to. Now there's an issue here with something that's been said, I think, from Ulu Ulu. Marlins will tap and go. This is Izzy Matalave. Look out for Nigel Ito, fresh on the field as well. Olua. Burrowing low. Kake. Now 
bit scrappy. Not to pull a picks it up. Kake with options either side. Alex to go to his right. For Hippie Herbs, the looping ball. Good sliding defense though from the Otara Scorpions. Five and a half to play in this first half. Irving. Used everyone on their bench already. Manurewa. Kake. Jumps out. Dribbles a little kick in behind. Picked up beautifully by the big man there. Didn't quite catch the number, but the Scorpions dodge the bullet. You can just see the um, Otara Scorpions side there on... on Screen Corey just bunched up, hands on hips and, and poor body language at the moment. They need to uh, rally together here for this next five minutes and, and try and gain, gain some momentum back in this contest. Great carry through the middle. That's the number three, Storm Tanaki. And front football now, the Scorpions. Chewing through the yardage all of a sudden. Luluai. Hakalo. Oh, lovely stuff from the Scorpions. Beautiful interchange of passing. It started with Maka Hakalo and finishes with a beautiful try to him. And there was an interchange of passing in there with one of the back rows, I think it was. But the Scorpions, a classy hit back. Yeah, the number 11 there, Manu uh, Fatialo for these. Um, played a big part in um, Otara's attacking opportunities today. And, Again, as we look at the Crown Lift Trucks um, instant replay there, Corey put that down to the run of Storm Tanaki um, getting outside of his, or well, doing the tough yards there on a tough carry, getting his um, Otara Scorpions team on the front foot. That really was great skill in the lead-up, wasn't it? Hakalo looked out the back, played short, but then the um, skill from Fatih Lofa to regather and then link again with his half... It's excellent stuff as Shaquano looks to establish a six-point lead for the Scorps in the shadows of halftime. Big shout-out to uh, Isi Tatupu as well. The uh, funeral director's on the back of the Otara jerseys there. Another great supporter of the club and indeed all things uh, South Auckland community-wise. Kicks good. Six point gap. Scorpion straight through the middle again. Linking now with Ulu Ulu. Foot races on. Ulu Ulu will go all the way. A stunning hit back from the Scorpions. Not two minutes after their last try. The footage was incredible. And really just big men carrying the ball hard and then great support play from Ulu Ulu TJ. Yeah, great run by the middle forward there from the Scorpions. And again, good support play by one of their, I think, is he one of the halves or uh, the fullback for today? But outstanding footwork there and showed a ton of pace to get around the uh, Manurua Marlins fullback there. So well done to Otara. Credit to uh, Brandon Nida, who actually made a pretty good covering tackle there. It was just a, a metre too late. But boy, they're getting rolled through the middle right now, Rewa. Back to a 10-point gap, kick to come. Yeah, that was uh, 
poor first up contact there as well by the, the middle forwards of uh, the Marlins. They just need to you know, put a body in front rather than arms there. And uh, the willingness from the Scorpions player obviously has just broken through there and got a good offload away for um, the support player. Uh, well executed try. So kick is no good. We go to half time here in the Crown of Trucks Fox Championship qualifiers with the Waterview Laundromat Otella Scorpions leading 20 points to 10 over the Witty Licensing Trust Manurewa Marlins. A short break for us before we get back with the second half action here at Nati Otara Park. Suape, he's over. Suape will open the scoring here at Howard Moody Reserve. A monster 40 20 from Zach Tippins. Corker Smith scoops it up. Half break from Corker Smith, who's now a foot race. And Dean Corker Smith, one to beat, does so and scores. Well, a bit of individual brilliance from Dean Corker Smith that came from broken play. Hunt. So that was that play where you'd probably look at a tip on there too, Corey. You had Connor Purcell isolating one defender there as we look at a nice long pass there. Sean Motumuave over in the far left-hand corner. Time off. Perhaps lucky to avoid a penalty there. Yorker to Brown. Brown holding up. Chess Brown! Sold them on the show and go. Breaks down the right hand side and the Bears extend the lead. It's 14 to 4, kick to come. Here's the opportunity going to come from here for the Leopards. Toti goes to the line, plays late to Leafy, and Leafy will barge over under the posts. Well, well, well. Benora, well, it will just be complete, complete, complete. Anakia. All boys are saying hold the ball. Siren sounds. Root Rooster remains here in Glen Eden. It is the West Auckland Rick and Block Lenora Bears who win this one. 14 points to 10 over a valiant Otahu Leopard sponsored by AGA Construction. Connor Toto Purcell, captain of the Otahu Leopards, joining us now. Will uh, Connor, a heartbreaker there in the end, mate? Uh, do you take any? Thing out of the fact that you're stuck in there so well, particularly when you're down to 12 men. Yeah, I think so. I think um, with any quality team that which then are, then are, um, you take a lot when you can stick it with them. I think um, at times we were the better team. Um, obviously, it doesn't help having 12. It doesn't help your cause for any team. But um, yeah, there's a lot of positives to come for us, even though we didn't come with those. Just a word on you middle forwards, at yourself, uh, Jacob Polo and. Uh, and Jamal Hunt in the middle of the park. Uh, huge minutes from you guys. Is that something you're all sort of, I guess, taking a bit of pride in together? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we, yeah, I think everyone talks about our middle. Um, so I think our middle took it on ourselves this year, especially with Jamal coming back to the club to, um, you know, give them something to talk about, really. We, us, especially our starters, we want the minutes. We think we can add value for those long periods of time. So, yeah, we do pride ourselves on getting long minutes, but also quality out of our starting middles. Victoria's captain Chase Bernard comes to join us now. Well, uh, Chase, a, a bit of a nail biter in the end there, mate. But you must be super proud of the way the boys held on. Yeah, really proud, boys. Um, put it on for eight minutes. I think today it was a really good game and showed a bit of how we can actually play on the full eight minutes. It felt like an attack. Maybe just didn't quite get out of third gear for, for much of the match. Was that sort of the general consensus that maybe things didn't click as well today as they have previously this year? Um, yeah, kind of. I think we just had a lot of errors in our game and boys were a bit tired from all the dinner. Well, well uh, we're going to go and present the uh, Root Rooster now. Chaser will let you go off and do that, and we're going to join them for the uh, post-match presentation. So Jamal Hunt and LG 
just uh, addressing the opposing group. Great sportsmanship being shown from the Atahu side here. So ARL director Evelyn Brooker is into now in Chase Bernard from the Glory Bears speaking. So the presentation now of the Root Rooster, another successful defence for the Glenora Bears. We remain undefeated at the top of the table. That concludes our coverage here from Harold Moody Reserve. We'll see you again next week for live stream action. AucklandLeague.co.nz for all of the details. We'll see you then. Got your back. Welcome back.